Open your Bibles now, please, to the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter number 25. Our text verses are verses number 14 through 30. And uh, the message is entitled, What Did Jesus Teach Us from the Story of the Talents? Of course, it's a, a question. And uh, we receive his message and it answers it for us. Matthew chapter 25, verses number 14. It's quite a reading, and uh, I guess you've gathered, but now I'm a slow talker. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but evidently you like it all right, you keep coming back, amen? That's a pretty good deal. Or did them deacons slip you some uh, cash to get you to come back? I don't know, but I'm glad you're here. Matthew chapter 25, look at verse number 14. I'll try to read fast. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to another one, to every man according to to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received One went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants uh, cometh and reckoned uh, with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strown. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take, therefore, the one talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. 
but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this Lord's Day, for all these wonderful people that love you uh, enough to be in your house this morning, uh, worshiping and hearing your word and trying to live according to your plan. Thank you. Uh, Lord, for the great singing, for every aspect of the service, we're grateful. Uh, Lord, thank you for this tremendous story of the talents before us. And God help us to learn from it. I, I'm so inadequate. I, I just really need your help, Lord. Uh, life is tough for me a lot of times these days. I need, I, I need your uh, help. That to preach. So, Lord, please help me. And anyone here, Lord, that, that is unsaved, God, help them. Help them to come to you, uh, receiving you as their only hope and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. As we come to our text for today, it's helpful uh, for us to remember that the narrative is still the return of the Lord Jesus Christ at the end of the tribulation to this earth to establish his millennium. The messages Jesus has been giving in the latter part of chapter 24 and all of 25 is to show us the need to be saved right with God and ready for eternity regardless of whether it's death, the rapture of the church or the actual arrival of Christ upon this earth. Regardless of what it is that sweeps us out into eternity, the Lord said, I want you to be ready. Jesus gives this story before us to illustrate that fact once again. He says, the kingdom of heaven is uh, like a man, and obviously is a businessman. It's a man that has a kingdom. And he said it's like a man that's going to be going away. He's traveling into a far country. And he is going to entrust his business to his servants. He wants them to expand and enrich his empire. So he calls three of them uh, in before him. And as you've read already, to one he gives uh, five talents. Now, a, a talent in, in ancient times, uh, of course, was a, uh, uh, was a coin of value. Uh, it could be a gold, a talent of gold or a talent of, of silver. It was to be used uh, in, in, in the markets, as it were. And talents also uh, were weights. Uh, but here, it's money. It's an exchange, as you can clearly see. He gives one five talents. He gives one two talents. And he gives one 
one talent, and he says, I'm going to give you these talents according to your several abilities. And then he takes his journey. While he is away, the one with five talents takes the money and trusts it into him and very wisely invests it in the markets and in trading and, and, and business ventures. And he gains five more talents, making him ten. Uh, the one with two talents does the same. Wisely makes investments, uh, uses it in the market, and he doubles his financial holdings also. But uh, the one servant that was given one talent did not use it widely. Wisely did not invest it, did not uh, make decisions in regard to uh, making uh, more money from it. Instead, he went and found a secret place, digs in the ground, and and puts that that talent in the ground and and covers it back up and marks it some way where he'll know and he alone will know where it's located. Well, after a long time, uh, the Lord said that the Lord returned and he complimented and he rewarded uh, the one with five talents and the one with two talents and made them ruler over many things. And it says they came and brought that to him. That's interesting. And then the one with one talent that had buried his came and, and, and uh, came and he made all kinds of excuses for burying his talent. And said, aren't you glad I've kept this talent for you, Lord? And the Lord accepted none of his excuses. Expressed his disapproval in no uncertain terms and angrily called uh, uh, that, that the guardsmen or, or, or people in his service would come and take that, that serpent that buried his talent and throw him into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. And all of you in the audience today know that's a reference to hell, don't you? Here's my guiding thoughts for the message today. First of all, there are gifts given according to ability. Secondly, there are gains received according to activity. Thirdly, the good servants are accepted and rewarded. But fourthly, the ground minded uh, uh, servant receives God's anger. It's a, a very instructional story Jesus gives. But have you thought about gifts? Have you thought about the gifts that God has graced your life with? And did you know he's given us all gifts? Notice the text. The kingdom is like a man that's traveling into his far country. He calls his servants and he delivered to them his goods. Now, obviously... You, you've 
already got the gist of, of the message. The story is to illustrate our duty and our responsibilities as His people until our Lord returns that. That is the, the message in, uh, in the nutshell. And He's showing us, you see, that, that it's His will, it's His command, it's what He wants for you and I to be involved in the enrichment and the expansion of God's kingdom on earth, His business in the world. Uh, dear friend of mine, uh, some of you know her, Nita Barnes, years ago, she used to sing a song, I came on business for the Lord. <laughs> and, and, and God has, has given us business that, that we're to do, and it's our business to enrich and enhance uh, and expand the kingdom of God. That's what we're here for. Here's what we learn. God knows our ability. God knows how capable we are in different areas of life. You know how he knows that? He's the author of it. He gave those abilities to you. He graced your life with the abilities that you have. And it's him that has, that has placed the knowledge and the wisdom in your mind and, and made you capable to do whatever it is He wants you to do. God gives us a gift or gifts to use for the expansion and enrichment of His kingdom. Did you know this is illustrated so many times in the Bible? I was thinking of the story of Solomon building the great temple of worship. David, wasn't God's will. He wanted to do it. It wasn't God's will for David to do it. But it was God's will for David's son Solomon to build the temple. And, and, and when it came time to undertake the great project, uh, uh, Solomon saw that within himself he did not have all of the gifts and the abilities and the wherewithal to do the job God wanted done. So he calls his friend the king of Tyre. And you read those stories, you'll discover that the Sidonians were skilled in hewing timber. <laughs> and, and the Israelites were, were not so skilled. They did not have the ability that the Sidonians had in, in hewing timber. And... The king of Tyre said, I'll help you build the temple. And his people were good upon the waters also. So they made these huge boats called floats. And they put all that timber. And obviously there were people capable of... Uh, of of steering the boats and handling the ships upon the seas. And stone was needed. So they found those that were gifted in, in working in stone and chiseling and shaping and, and making stone for the temple of the Lord. And, and all of these talents got together and made the great temple 
in which God was worshipped. God gives unique people unique gifts for a unique purpose. And whatever gift you have, and you do have a gift, it is your duty and your responsibility to use it for the Lord. He's given the church abilities. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 11, the body has different gifts. And, uh, some sing and some preach and some give and some do this and some do that. But God is saying, I've given all of you gifts to use. And the same in our text to those who would be living after we're gone in the tribulation, that they will have their gifts. And in the millennium, and they will have their gifts. I mention all of these aspects because God is interested in all of us in every age and every dispensation. He has a plan for our lives. And in verses number 21 and 23 describes people that will have abilities during the golden age, the millennium, to come upon the earth to further his administration. It's what I want you to see. None of us can say we have no gifts. None of us. We all have a gift. And it's it's interesting. Did you notice this? God gave to one five talents according to his ability. God gave two uh, oh, one, two talents according to his ability. And God gave one according to his ability, but you'll find that word according to their several abilities. Isn't that interesting? What if I were to tell you that you've got your ability plus? In, in other words, you, you've got more than just one uh, uh, ability to serve the Lord. Uh, He's saying, whatever your gift is, use it for the Lord. And then when something unexpected comes up, you're still going to have more abilities to address that also. Several abilities. All of us have, have gifts. Now, obviously, some people use their gifts and some do not. That brings us to the second point of the message. There are gains according to activity. Now what do I mean by that? Notice the text. Then he that had received the five talents went. You see he he did. It requires activity to go or to went. He, He went. And traded. It requires activity to trade. With the same, and made them five talents. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained other two. These two servants, uh, by actually using their talents, were uh, able to double their financial holding. And that's significant because it turns out that the financial holdings belong to the Lord. And they will be brought to the Lord, given to the Lord. But notice, please, the servant receiving one talent didn't use his at all. Instead, he buried it in the ground. This, and he didn't, he didn't even put it in an interest bearing account. You would have thought that he would have at least put it in an interest bearing account. But he buried it in the ground. And obviously, it could not be used, it could not grow, 
It would not expand the kingdom. It would not enrich the kingdom. As a matter of fact, being in the ground, regardless, uh, uh, if it was gold, it would tarnish. If it was silver, it would tarnish. There would be a deterioration process. If you don't use what God's given you, it'll deteriorate. Now, here's three questions. What are we doing with the ability or abilities that God has given us? I don't know how many people. We've got a great crowd today. Could I ask every one of you under the sound of my voice to ask yourself that question, what am I doing with the ability that God has given me? What am I using the talent that He has given me for? How am I using it? Question number two. Do we care enough about Christ and His work, the church, to be and to stay active for Him? I'd like to stress that stay active. You see, what we have is a contrast between activity and inactivity. We have a a, a coin buried in the ground, and, and then we have a coin put into the marketplace. Do we care enough? Now, every one of us get ask ourselves that question. Do we care enough about Christ? He's done so much for us. Oh, God help us. It's serious business when in turn we care nothing or so little about Him. Third question or statement, I might say. Isn't it sad? May I turn it to a statement? It is sad when talented people are unfaithful people. When talented people are unfaithful people. This is the saddest thing. Lord, I... I got this talent you've given me. It's a it's a shiny gold coin. It'll sparkle when the light hits it. This this silver talent that I have, oh, uh, it'll it'll glisten in somebody's eyes. But 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 Lord, I don't. I'm not going to put it in the marketplace. I'm not going to take it to church. I'm not going to get involved in the kingdom of God. I'm not going to use my talents for the Lord. I'm going to bury it in the ground here. And somebody's going to come by and say, oh, he's got a real talent. She's got a real talent. Let's see if we can find it. It's down here in the ground somewhere. And they got it buried. That's so sad. That's so sad. Notice how sad that is. And this fellow made all kind of excuses. <laughs> and he essentially blamed the Lord for it. Did you know that? He essentially blamed the Lord. You're a hard guy to work for. Well, the way the transgressor is one that's really hard. Do we care enough is it sad when talented people won't do hardly anything for the Lord? Won't do anything for the Lord. Brings me to my next point. The good servants are accepted and rewarded. Look at the text. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. 
three things to learn after a long time. From our perspective, it seems so long, doesn't it? Lord, I've read in the Bible where you're coming back, but I, it's been so long. I buried my dear mom and my dad. They was looking for you. Lord, it sure seems like a long, long time. And you can use that time one of two ways. You can invest in the kingdom of God. Or you can bury what you've got in the ground. God is pleased with people that get active in the work of the kingdom. And stay active in the work of the king. And use what he's given them. After a long time. But let me tell you this. From his perspective, he'll be right on time. We need to look at this long time. In the sense that the Bible says that the Lord is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You're here and you're not saved. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't scoff at the fact that 25 years ago you heard an old preacher preach the coming of the Lord. I wouldn't scoff and say, oh, I heard that guy say that 25 years and he still hasn't got. I wouldn't scoff at that. I'd bow my head and I'd say, thank you, God, that I'm still alive. Thank you that I haven't been swept out into eternity in an undone condition. I'd, I'd say, thank you, God, that I got a chance to get in. Get, I got a chance to get saved. That's how you should deal with that long time. The good servants had something to offer to the Lord. Isn't that something? Look. Look, uh, the Lord of the servants came and reckoned with them. Now notice, and he that had received the five talents came and brought other five talents. <laughs> Isn't that good? Over there sat the Lord. The Lord came in and sat down. He sat down on his throne. And here this, this servant had waited a long time for him, been active for him, involved in him, served him all his life. Uh, I went and, and, and got in the treasure box and, and brought out not only the five talents, but, but uh, five more talents and, and come and said, Oh, Lord, I'm so glad I, I got ten talents uh, to lay at your feet. I, I'm so glad. Here, Lord, I've given you more than you've entrusted me with. And the fellow with two talents, he's, I'll tell you, the old boys run to the throne room. They're so happy that they had something to offer God. But the picture was rather bleak with the fellow that had the one talent. And he come up and made all of his excuses for his inactive life. Made all of the excuses. Lord, I knew you was a tough guy to, uh, to deal with. And, uh, and you, you reap where you haven't sown. So, uh, in other words, I figured you didn't really need uh, my talent uh, because uh, you, you, you'd, uh, you, you'd reap somewhere else. You know, a lot of us, we always say somebody else will do it. Don't we? Somebody else will do it. I don't have to. That's what he said. He brought all those excuses to the Lord. So, Lord, they don't need me. 
Some of you right here in this great auditorium today, you're saying, oh, they don't need me counting our MBC. They don't need me. They got some other. They got a fellow over. I got five talents. I don't have a, uh, but, but one. They got a fellow over. I got two talents. But I don't have but one. They don't, they don't need. They don't need me. Listen, 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 listen. God needs you. He's given you a talent and an ability to use it, and He don't want you to bury it in the ground. Now, some of you ought to get on the altar at this invitation and repent. I didn't write this story, folks. I'm just the messenger. Now, listen, the good servant has, what have you got to offer the Lord? Did you ever think about that? What have you got to offer the Lord? Hey, man, lady, let's make this thing real individual. Pastor Range, what have you got to offer the Lord? What have you got to offer the Lord? Well, what do you what do you got to offer the Lord? Have you done anything? What you got? Listen, the good servants got rewarded. And if you want to know what twenty verse twenty one and twenty three is about, it's about exactly what it says. During the millennial, he'll give them ruling administrative positions in the millennial kingdom. Because they used what they had for the Lord. Now, look at our, ourselves. So let's ask ourselves some questions. What will we have to offer our Lord when we meet Him? I ask myself that question all the time. What have we personally done to enrich and expand the kingdom of God? You know... This great church family has done so much over the decades, expanding and enriching the kingdom of God, and this church stands second to none. But this isn't a corporal, corporate question. It's a personal question. What have we personally done? to enrich and expand the kingdom. Do we have any crowns to cast at our feet, at the Lord's feet? Let me read this for you. Revelation chapter 4, verse number 10. The four and the twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne. And worship him that liveth forever and ever. And cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Don't you want a crown to lay at Jesus' feet? I don't understand people that don't. I don't, I don't understand. I'm at a total loss. I absolutely do not understand people that, that, uh, that don't want or, or aren't concerned uh, about having something to offer God on Judgment Day, a crown to cast at His feet. Listen, this thing isn't about us. It's about having something from us to give to Him. I'll tell you what. I don't want to stand back somewhere in the distance of the throne room and and watch other people throw a crown down and think to myself, well, I don't even have nothing to give the Lord. I want to, I want something to lay at Jesus' feet. Do you want to have something to lay at Jesus' feet? If you want to, you can. He's given you several abilities, at least one talent. Don't bury it. Put it in the marketplace. You'll double it. You'll have something to offer the Lord. 
All right, I'll close with this. The ground minded servant received the anger of God, God's anger. Look at that text once more. Then he which now this this message ain't about you always doing everything right. It ain't about that. But if, if it was about me doing everything right, I, I wouldn't have a crown to offer the Lord. Service to the Lord is about serving the Lord through all of our shortcomings, through all of our failures. Through all, and, and, and when there's been sin, it's about picking ourselves. It's about going on for God. It's about having something to offer the Lord. It's about caring enough. This fellow, he only received one talent. And he come and gave his gambit of excuses. You know, uh, excuses, they're like drugs. They're very addictive. Maybe I could be a little more lighthearted. Excuses are like Lay's potato chips. Nobody can make just one. God come up with excuses. Man, if, I'll tell you what, sometimes the excuses I get, and people actually think you believe that stuff. They actually think you accept that stuff. Well, I got one over on him. You know what an excuse is? It's the thin skin of a reason stuffed inside a lie. How come I ain't getting no way man's on that? I stopped preaching now and started meddling, didn't I? Notice the Lord didn't accept the excuse he offered. None of them. Now, obviously, this guy wasn't saved. He is a servant in it for what he could get. And it was about him. He lived his own life. He won't fool with God's stuff. You see, he buried it. He, I ain't got time for church. I ain't got time for Christianity. I ain't got time for all that religious stuff. I'm going to put this stuff in the ground and forget about it. Out of sight, out of mind. But then make excuses for the Lord. And the Lord doesn't accept any of the excuses, does he? Now listen, lost person. Whatever excuse you come up with, for being lost is not good enough. God loves you. God wants to give you. God will give you eternal life. You'll never perish. He wants to do that for you. But you're not going to wait to the end of the road and make all kinds of excuses why you didn't get saved. The Lord's not going to accept a one of them. How many remembers Phil Donahue? His talk show? Occasionally he used to uh, interview some Christians and some ministers, and some of them gave them the gospel. And old Phil Donahue, he'd just say, I just can't help but believe that, that God's going to say, Come on in. Well, let me tell you something. God's not going to say, Come on in. If you don't come on in now, you're not going to hear come on in then. To your horror, what you will hear the Lord say, Hey, you deacons or servants of the Lord, come over here and get this guy and drag him off into hell. I don't mean to be so mean, but... Read the text. And that says, and said he cast that fellow in to outer darkness, and there was gnashing of teeth, wailing. Listen, he was lost, and he went to hell. Now, let me tell you something. The most important thing you can do in life is make sure you're saved. 
make sure you're going to heaven when you die or the Lord comes back or the tribulation happens or the millennium, whatever, the most important thing you can do is make sure you're saved. God help us. God help you to flee from the wrath to come. That old boy probably sat in a church service much like this and heard the message. And God dealt with his heart. But you see what he did instead? He said, oh, he said, them people, they'll be, somebody will be looking at me. I, I don't want to go to the altar. I, I know I need the Lord, but my, my, this is a burst stuff. I, you, you know, I'll just, I'll just sulk on the way. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Come to Christ. Get on the altar. Talk to God. Let's stand.